I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I let my hand, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. Oh Lord. All my life you have been so, so good. With every burden I am able. Oh I will sing. Of the goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of God. God and I, la la, God and I, why you? God and I, God and I, why you? Nobody be like him, nobody dare like him. Oh, one day, God and I, la la. Mutu roba, mi oriru jesu yere. Mutu roba, mi oriru. Christy, I was a Mommy, oh Lord, oh Femi, 
Oni femi, o femi jo 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 o gba mi bi mo tiri o. Ala bo mi olore mi, ala nu mi oluro lo wa mi. Iwo ni masi, ti ti aye mi o. Hallelujah for the Lord God omnipotent reigne. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Many people, I will tell you why I'm singing the song of praise. Apart from the fact that the Word of God said we should praise Him and worship Him and give Him all the glory, honor, adoration, exaltation, because He is worthy to receive it. Apart from that, hmm, this is testimony time. <laughs> I, I have a reason to praise the Lord. I've got a reason to praise my God. Yes, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. I have a reason to praise the Lord. More than one reason. Oloro to more jade ninu ibi O pa bi da so bi direre God that turns all things for good for every children of God that truly seek him that trust in him solely that hold on to him solely for help Father hmm O dupa ore olorun laye mi nitori wipe Wo o tori mi raja o lowo baba o ni po si atemi atawo mo mi Wo o tori wa raja o lowo baba o ni po si Mo dupa mo fi ye fo luwa Hmm Yeah this is testimony time. Before I go to the Bible meditation, which is intense as well, this is testimony time about myself and people that concerns me. Many testimonies to give today, and I will give that testimony. This video might fall into part one, two, three, but I will not rush it. I will give the testimony. Around the late in the night myself and my kids we were out to do shopping because um i said to them i need to get one or two things i mean food should be in the house before i run out of cash <laughs> that's my, my my policy anyway whatever i need to do i quickly do it before i run out of cash and we left the house myself and my kids I drove out with my kids. We did our shopping in one of our regular stores that we used to do. It. On our way back, I dropped by our, our grocery store in along my residence where I live, along the street, because we need to get some stuff there that I can only get it there. I can get it in other stores. So when we finish with the shopping, um, when I wanted to pull out where I parked, there was a car, I was parking in front of a car, there was a car right in front of me. So I went here to see if the, the guy is ready to go, but it was on the phone. But from the look of it, in order for him to be able to pull out easily, I decided to pull out and park behind him because the car behind him left. And that is the way I am. I'm always, you know, thinking about others, even in my driving, I'm considering. So I'll park behind him so that it will be easier for him to pull out where he parked. And when we finished the shopping and we wanted to leave, the oncoming vehicles, because I was facing the oncoming vehicles, they stopped, kindly enough, they stopped for me. And another car that is, was about to pull into the parking space area was facing me. 
along the parking space area and the oncoming vehicle too were facing me so i have like two sides of two cars facing me the major road some set of car and the parking area one oncoming vehicle so while our traffic came to pull her they flash for me to go and i pull out and i say thank you with my flash but before i joined the road that leads to my direction if I had not taken a second to look towards my left, myself and my son would have been involved in a ghastly, ghastly accident. When I said ghastly accident, I meant every word. This white car, the, the speed, the speed limit to that road is 30 miles per hour. If I have taken it for granted that the cars in front of me get me away, taking, it, taking the other road user on the lane that I'm about to join for granted that they will give me way to. I and my son, at a close range, would have, we would have been hit. Even the driver, I doubt it if he would have made it because the speed at which he was approaching us. Myself and my son wouldn't have made it either. Someone would have died. Because that speed is way, way above the road speed limit. It's from my, from my own point of view, it's more than 50 miles per hour. The speed at which is approaching. And shortly before then, my son was telling me when we went into the store and we came by, he was telling us that, oh, there was a guy, he was really drunk and he just walked straight into the road and all the oncoming cars have to wait for him. And I said to him, if he had, if he had taken a little longer, if he had walked into the road as at the time, that white vehicle speed off and I have to stop break down completely i have to press my brake down completely for the car to stop right on time in order for us not to be hit if the guy too had crossed at that point in time it would have been a goner it would have been a dead man so i mean god and when i got home honestly speaking i i took it for granted i didn't even think twice about it I was just saying to my kids that that's a dangerous driving for anyone to do that kind of speed limit in a place where it's 30 miles per hour and people cross it, there are homes, there are stores here and there. Well, early hour this morning, because I couldn't, I just couldn't sleep. Early hour this morning, I don't know what time a.m. I, I sat on my bed and that it it dawned on me that that spirit in, inside of me said to me and i know it's the spirit of god the holy spirit of god said to me that do you realize that i've just saved you and your sons from ghastly accident it should have been a different story and that is when the gravity of everything dawned on me and this person did stop Despite that, that's despite what happened, that it almost hit us. It is tough. Instead of it, it accelerated the more. So it's difficult to even catch the plate number to see what it is. It accelerated so at a very high speed that, like, you know, I don't know how to describe it. And then it occurred to me that, oh, my Father, my God in heaven, thank you. Thank you for saving us myself and my children, because I've got my three boys in the car with me. One is, my second was sitting next to me um, on the passenger side, and they, his older brother is sitting next to my kiddo that's got special need at the back, because he has to like stay with him and look after him while we go the running around with his younger brother. Then when we drove off, they are in the car with me, and I was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And I was praying earlier this morning that what I took for granted is, is something that could have led any one of us or, or, or the, the four of us to mortuary or critically heal 
or injured in the hospital, crippled or anything, then it dawned on me that, oh, Father, forgive me. I take you for granted. I take your protection upon my life for granted. We cannot take God for granted. Aule Jolie Abaramorije. If they said someone that is supposed to be buried, gone, forgotten long time ago, I will raise up my hand. I have encountered incidents, series of incidents that could have made me gone and forgotten, as in wiped me, erased me out of existence. Well, each time, each time, apart from the accident, each time, such a thing happens, I see the mighty hand of God. Each time, the occasion when such a thing happened to my second son, and he gave up the ghost to write in my hand, I give, I give God the glory, the God of the prophets, the God of calling. Because that day, I wasn't thinking about my health. I wasn't thinking about my blood pressure. I wasn't thinking about anything at all. I screamed like never before. And I thank Almighty God, God the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Spirit of God took over. And I scream and I call upon the God of calling, God of the prophets. Uh, you did not have any... You, you didn't promise me that I would lose any of my children. You know what I went through to have those three boys. It was a matter of life and death when I had my three boys. Well, each time, God see me through. If I want to have like five, six, ten children, I know the father that I saw that he would have seen me through. That's a long story. I don't want to go into that. And I call on God, on calling God of the prophet, that answer it by fire. And he answers me. He brought my second son back from death. Everything happened so fast, even before the arrival of the ambulance. When he had seizure, it was, it, from what he told us, he, he, he was in the sleep. And something attacked him. Something pounced on him and he had seizure and he fell from the bunker. And before we know it, he gave up the ghost right in my hand. And I thank God for his brother also. The moment his brother noticed, his brother swing into action also my first. And he said, no way, I'm not going to lose my brother. And he did something peculiar that day. That I know that it is the Spirit of God in him that guided him to do that. Well, the bottom line is that we were able, God helped us, the Spirit of God helped us and brought back my son to life. And that is why he is a God of resurrection and life. When I had brain hemorrhage that comes with stroke, before I experienced the stroke, right on my bed, when it's time for me to give up the ghost, the Spirit of God said to me, you're about to die, call your mom. And my phone, luckily for me, my phone is always nearby my bed. When I had the brain hemorrhage and I was able to manage, after several attempts, to get my mom's number to call her. And while I was talking to her, shortly after that Spirit said to me, you're about to die. Call your mom. While I was talking to her, and she was saying, call your children, call your this, let them do this, let them do that. All I know is that I gave up. Why she was talking to me on the phone? Because I stopped talking. I couldn't talk properly anymore. I gave up. And when I gave up, I can see my body on the bed. And my spirit was right next, standing by the wall, watching. And when I saw my spirit, my body on the bed, I said, I, I prayed this one prayer to my father in heaven. I said, Father, please return my spirit to my body. 
And the minute I prayed that prayer, my spirit went back into my body and I came back to consciousness. All the while, while my mom was talking, she didn't know what is happening at the other end. She was busy talking, panicking and giving instruction. Well, I was just quiet. She didn't know that I already gave up the ghost. Until after my recovery that I mentioned it to her that, Mommy, do you know that I died on you while you were talking to me? <laughs> while you were talking to me, I died. And I was looking at my body on the bed. But God gave me the grace to pray that prayer, that Father, I'm not ready. Send my body back into my, send my spirit, my, send my spirit back into my body. And he answered me. Because that is his promise to me that when I call on him, he will answer me. Like I said, he's a God of resurrection and life. During the COVID-19, many people lost their lives. It's not everyone that have the grace to survive COVID-19. This is my testimony again to one really, really close to me. My blood, my brother. The same brother of mine that was victimized out of UK, a medical doctor. Practicing medical doctor in United Kingdom. Already training as a GP, but he was frustrated and victimized out of UK before he could accomplish his training and get his license as a GP. With problems, error there, what marriage, betrayal, backstabbing, and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to go into that because that's not why I'm saying this. I'm saying this because this is testimony time. So that everyone that is hearing my voice will know the kind of God that we serve, that I serve, the creator of heaven and earth and all dear with him. The one who was, who is, and is to come. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of all things. The one that all power in heaven and on earth belong unto. The one that says and he does what he says. My brother chose to face his pains alone, pains of heartbreak, betrayal, backstabbing. Even myself that I'm his sister, he decided to shut us up and face his betrayal, uh, his, 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 his pains alone. You know, some people are like that, they would rather face their pain alone. Because they choose it that way. Some will allow other people into their pain to, you know, to help them and support them. But it's not everyone that it works for like that. Some of us will rather face it alone and shut people out and face whatever we are going through alone. And that is the way my brother is. Living far apart from me out of London, I find it frustrating, I find it painful that why can't they trust me? I'm the firstborn of the family, I'm his big sister. But at the same time, being the first son of the family as well, even though I'm their big sister, I'm the firstborn of the family. Well, likewise, I gave him understanding and I respect his wish. During that COVID-19 period, it was infected also with COVID-19. It was seriously ill during the COVID-19 and it died on its own without help. Alas, God of resurrection and life brought him back. Even though COVID-19 killed him, God of resurrection and life brought my brother back. It took a while. The recovery took a while. But it came back. And when it came back, unlike myself, 
when I passed, when I had the brain hemorrhage, and I passed, it was after I, I came back to lie, I tried to get help to go and use the loo, and I realized that I've, I've got a stroke, a long way, hey, mild stroke, and I could hardly talk. Even the paramedic too noticed it and was like, you are showing signs of stroke. Your speech already is showing. And I said, oh, yes. And I told her, oh, my arm and my leg and everything. It was after I died during that MRH period, during MRH period, and I came back. And I realized that I've already, I suffered stroke by the time I came back to consciousness. When I passed, I can see my body on the bed. And I was able to pray to God that I'm not ready. Father, please send my body back and my spirit back into my body. In my brother's case, when he died, it was privileged to see the vision of heaven. When people die, what the journey is like. The journey he embarked on when he died. Before he was brought back to life. How God prepared him before he was brought back to life. This is not then say, then say, this is not story, a tale story that I heard from anyone. This is reality, truth, and the fact. I'm given my testimony here. That's why I say to one mommy in Christ, does not matter your age, when you're a spiritual leader and you earn that respect to be called a mommy or a daddy, it's because you 